Welcome to our community of Our Lady, Star of the Sea. Welcome to those here in the church with us, and welcome to those people watching the live stream from your homes. Today we celebrate the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. 
we reflect on the importance of hospitality in Christian life, as well as the costs and rewards of being a follower of Jesus. Please join in the entrance hymn. Good morning, everyone. And it's great to see so many people here in church this morning. I, uh, when we first started off and we had five people in the church, including me, I was under no, no stress at all because uh, we had a couple of people looking after the videoing and a couple of people singing and I was really talking to nobody. But I wasn't really because I was talking to all you good people at home. And so we've got a bit of a mixture today. Lots of people here in the church and lots of people uh, tuning in from home. And so it's great to have you all with us today as we do celebrate this 13th Sunday of the year. So let's begin now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And Thank you. And so as we join together now in celebrating our Eucharist, let's pause for a moment as we acknowledge our sins, asking God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. mercy. And may almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting.
Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, as Elisha was on his way to Shunem, a woman of rank who lived there pressed him to stay and eat there. After this, he always broke his journey for a meal when he passed that way. She said to her husband, Look, I am sure the man who is constantly passing our way must be a holy man of God. Let us build him a small room on the roof and put him a bed in it and a table and a chair and a lamp. Whenever he comes to us, he can rest there. One day when he came, he retired to the upper room and lay down. What can be done for her, he asked. Gehazi, his servant, answered, Well, she has no son and her husband is old. Elisha said, Call her. The servant called her, and she stood at the door. This time next year, Elisha said, you will hold a son in your arms. The word of the Lord. Response, forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Through all ages, my mouth will proclaim your truth. Of this I am sure, that your love lasts forever, that your truth is firmly established as the heavens. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Happy the people who acclaim such a king, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face who find their joy every day in your name, who make your justice the source of their bliss. For it is you, O Lord, who are the glory of their strength. It is by your favour that our might is exalted. For our ruler is in the keeping of the Lord, our king in the keeping of the Holy One of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptised in Christ Jesus, we were baptised in his death. In other words, when we were baptised, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. But we believe that having died with Jesus, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. When he died, he died, once for all, to sin. So his life now is life with God. And in that way, you too must consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. 
chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy people. Pra praise God who called you out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus instructed the twelve as follows Anyone who prefers father or mother to me is not worthy of me. Anyone who prefers son or daughter to me is not worthy of me. Anyone who does not take up his cross and follow in my footsteps is not worthy of me. Anyone who finds his life will lose it. Anyone who loses his life for my sake will find it. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And those who welcome me welcome the one who sent me. Anyone who welcomes a prophet because he's a prophet will have a prophet's reward. And anyone who welcomes a holy man because he is a holy man will have a holy man's reward. If anyone gives so much as a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is a disciple, then I tell you solemnly, he will most certainly not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I came across a story recently from the Jewish tradition, which tells of a Jewish rabbi who, is, who used to disappear into the forest on the evening of every Sabbath. His congregation, who saw him as a very holy man, presumed that he was going into the forest to find a, a nice quiet place where he could feel very close and pray very intently to God. But they were just a little bit curious. So one Sabbath, the congregation chose one of its members to follow the rabbi in the hope that they might gain some sort of an insight into the way that the, the rabbi was praying. And so as the rabbi set out, his pursuer followed him at a discreet distance. So deeper and deeper into the woods, the rabbi went until he came to the cottage of a very elderly lady who was very badly crippled. And there he proceeded to cut firewood, cook for her and uh, clean the house. And after he'd finished his chores, he went back to his little house next to the synagogue and began to pray. Anyway, we can imagine what happened when the member of that congregation went back to his own little village. They all crowded around, very keen to know exactly what the rabbi had uh, discovered. Anyway, so they said to this man, did the rabbi soar to the heavens in ecstasy as he prayed? This man thought for a little while, for a little while and he said, no, he said, he went much, much higher. In the gospel today, Jesus says that anyone who loves his life for his sake, for Jesus' sake, will, uh, anyone who loves his life will lose it. Anyone who loses his life for Jesus' sake will save it. And so it's by giving ourselves, giving ourselves away, that we actually find life uh, with great meaning ourselves. And the rabbi shows how important uh, prayer is, but it's even, uh, it's, it's not of great value unless it's accompanied by action. We read in James, of course, that 
that uh, prayer without works is lifeless, is dead. And so the rabbi's prayer included very much the service he gave to this lady who was very much in need. So Jesus talks today about giving a cup of cold water. Small deeds like that don't make the headlines and yet they're just so important. And Jesus goes on to say that not only are they great value here and now, but they do have eternal uh, consequences. The giving of a cup of cold water stands, of course, for any number of small acts of kindness that uh, bring light and bring hope to people who in any way are in need. And today, therefore, we're being asked to uh, take some time to look at the way that we live each day, how we lived yesterday, how we plan to live today and our tomorrows. You know, is our, is our life, are our days littered with these acts of kindness to others, thoughtfulness, or is my life still very much just about me? But Jesus is showing us that these little acts of kindness to other people really do matter and they really do make a difference. As we look around us, you know, it's good not to focus on the nasty things that are happening. You know, that is very much the centre of all the news channels. But it's really important for us to uh, focus on the good that we see going on all around us. And we don't have to look very far if we take the time to just pause and look. In all sorts of ways, people within our community are giving the, uh, the equivalent of this cup of cold water you know, to those people who are in need. Parents every day in the way that they love and care for their children. Spouses in the consideration and the little things they do to help and show their love. Neighbours, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic, are looking out for one another, offering to help, to be of assistance. The young in our schools and our colleges. So often we see young children doing tremendous acts of just really acts of kindness and consideration and help for one another. And I often see it down in our little school here. Kids who go out of their way just to be kind and, and help one another. The kind of hospitality shown by the woman to the prophet Elisha in our first reading is repeated every day in all kinds of ways uh, in ordinary circumstances like ours. And so let's remember today all of those people who've shown us love and hospitality over the years. Those who have made us feel welcome when we were new to a community, new to a group, new to a church. We value those who are hospitable to us when we need a listening ear, even a shoulder to lean on, the shoulder to cry on. Such acts of kindness are welcome and they're expressions of that cup of cold water that Jesus speaks about in our gospel today. We look at the life of Jesus himself who came not to be served but to serve and how appreciative he was when the Samaritan woman gave him water to drink from the well. How appreciative he was of the welcome he always received at the home of Martha and Mary. Even when Simon of Cyrene helped Jesus to carry his cross. And Jesus also indicated that when hospitality and kindness is shown to others, there is something going on there that uh, we may not always realise. Because he says, anyone who welcomes you welcomes me and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me 
So let's pray today for the grace of God to work, uh, to be with us, to inspire us, not just to be thankful to those who have welcomed and reached out to us, but especially that we each day, maybe even in small ways, will show our love and our kindness, the service that Jesus calls us to. And so let's always remember, if anyone gives so much as a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, he or she will most certainly not lose their reward. Now let's all stand up together now as we profess our faith, as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Christ took up his cross for our sake. Let us bear our burdens of those in need and bring our prayer before the God of all. That the church may be made worthy of Christ through the ministry to those in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who seek refuge from hostile and unjust regimes will find refuge and security. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community be known by its outreach and concern for others. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That communities and nations experiencing the COVID-19 pandemic will have wise and strong leadership Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and housebound will be blessed and find comfort and healing through Christ, especially Eddie Strawn. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they will reach their eternal reward. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. And let's just pause for a moment now as we pray in our own hearts for our own special intentions. Faithful and loving God, you have entrusted to us a share in the mission of Christ your Son. Hear our prayers and help us to follow the path of sacrifice and service until we reach our promised reward. And we make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours 
may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Mark, our Archbishop, and Kent, his assistant bishops, with the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her blessed spouse, and Joseph, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to his apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. And we come to communion as we normally do out that way, but make sure you take your time and we socially distance.
Thanks very much everybody for being with us here this morning. It's great to see the numbers growing. I know uh, life is complicated, isn't it? When we've got to, got to get, go into the events and book in. But I think most people are being able to, uh, to, uh, to go through that process. And thanks very much for the efforts you made. And don't feel that because you're here this week that I better not put my name down next week. Because a lot of people feel like that and we end up with an empty church. Because everybody's thinking, well look, everybody else is putting their name down. So I don't have, better not put my name down. So we end up with once again me talking to the people at home. Not that there's anything wrong with you people at home. <laughs> so thanks very much for, for being with us. And uh, we hope that the numbers will continue to grow. Because we can't fit more in than we have today. The total that the church can hold is, is 100. Um, and that includes everybody, uh, choir and organist and everybody. So um, feel for quite confident in putting your name down and if you're registered in that number, then you're fine to come. If you weren't here last week, once again, we're doing as all the shopping centres do. You enter through the front door and then you've got to exit through side doors. So there's not too much a closeness of people. And uh, so will you be obedient and do that, all those who are here? Wonderful. Uh, Graham is big and tough. He'll be supervising that. <laughs> so thanks very much to everybody who came and thanks very much once again to Anthony who looked after the live streaming and to all of those in the choir, the readers. Thanks very much to Graham. We do have once again the church open for prayer on Tuesday from 10am until 11.30. If you want to come and just spend some little quiet time in prayer, you're welcome to do so. And also we have the weekday Mass on Thursday at 9.15. And for that you don't need to book in, you're most welcome to come because the numbers never get up to the number that we have to worry about um, going over the required number that we can hold. So let's stand together now as we pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. With may Almighty God bless you, the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Let's go in peace. Thanks be to God. <laughs>